All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So in this talk, in short time, I would like to present the summary of the study. And here is that summary and the study. And if I need to draw it, I'll draw it as well. Just type here, draw. So the study is published day before yesterday. I think it was in the works for a longer time. I believe the variant it covered was before Omicron. It is a small study, 18 patients from emergency room who were COVID infected. This is important because I'm seeing that folks are confusing this with vaccination. This is with COVID infected patients. So what they did was the researchers, they took the blood samples from COVID infected patients they also took plasma from healthy, uninfected, unvaccinated individuals. They also took plasma from healthy, uninfected, but vaccinated individuals. And they tried an interesting thing. I think this is a groundbreaking work they did. And here is what they did. In our body, our immune system has two basic parts innate arm and acquired arm. My skin, your skin, is part of the innate arm. It acts as a protection from external pathogens, viruses from entering into our body. Our, our covering are the GIT mucous membranes or the eyes mucous membranes. These are also part of innate arm. So it is not necessary that just the cells are part of innate arm. Bigger tissues are part of innate arm as well. There are cells, for example, monocytes, macrophages, natural killer cells, neutrophils, which are part of innate arm. Then there are proteins as well, for example, complement system and other proteins. Adaptive arm is the more sophisticated arm, it is able to adapt the response to a specific pathogen, for example, SARS-CoV-2, or for example, vaccine. It takes vaccine as a foreign material as well. When a foreign material arrives, that is called an antigen, that antigen is exposed to all the cells of adaptive and innate arm. However, innate arms first respond. They get a chance to react. They become activated without needing any help. They can automatically become activated. In those cells, monocyte is a very important cell. Monocyte are the cells that are usually present in the, they are made in the bone marrow, then they come out in the blood and circulate in there, in the blood. Then some monocytes leave the blood vessels and go in our tissues, and they are everywhere in our tissue. And when they go in the tissue, we call them resident monocytes, or monocytes, and now they are called macrophages or dendritic cells. Good. The researchers found Oh, let me back up for one more concept. SARS-CoV-2, the virus, we know uses ACE2 to bind with the cell and then to infect it, right? So it binds with ACE2, then the TMPRSS2 kind of primes it or cuts it. And now that spike protein becomes, the S2 part becomes available, which then fuses with the cell membrane, helps the virus fuse with the cell membrane and mRNA goes in the cell, right? So the summary of this last statement is ACE2 is necessary for SARS-CoV-2 to enter and infect a cell, which means those immune system cells or those any system cells that do not have ACE2 on them are at least assumed to be protected from infection. Good. For example, HIV infects the immune cells because it has a receptor on the immune cell with which it can bind and get in. 
Fortunately, monocytes, macrophages, natural killer cells, neutrophils, they do not have ACE2 on them. <laughs> this allows them to not become infected with, with SARS-CoV-2. It's a good thing that coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2 cannot infect our immune system cells. Good. Researchers, these researchers from Boston uh, Children's Hospital, they found that SARS-CoV-2 was present or was able to get into monocytes. Monocytes are mononuclear cells or immune system cells, as I said, and they are circulating in our blood. SARS-CoV-2 was in the monocytes and was able to enter them when there was no ACE2 on the monocyte. So the, then the quest, <coughs> excuse me, question became how? And the researchers answered this question. And the question was antibody dependent enhancement. That's what it was. So what does that mean? What that means is, now if I can share my screen for a second. What that means is, this is my yesterday's talk. Here is SARS-CoV-2. It is not supposed to get into this monocyte because the monocyte doesn't have a ACE2 on it. But they found that SARS-CoV-2 was still able to get in. And how was it able to get in? Because when the SARS-CoV-2 or the virus, coronavirus, arrived in our body, our immune system, innate arm, adaptive arm started working two, day, two days, three days, five days, seven days. We started producing antibodies. Those antibodies coated this virus. This is our normal behavior. Our innate arm starts a war with the pathogen. Then it also activates the adaptive arm. Adaptive arm makes antibodies. Antibodies become coated on the surface of the pathogen. And then the pathogen coated with the antibodies. So I should have made a lot of antibodies. I intentionally didn't make them all because I thought the diagram will become too confusing. But antibodies are everywhere in this pathogen. The antibody in turn, let's say this is the antibody. And look at my hand. This is an antibody, this hand. Uh, this hand. So the arms or the lower part of the arm and the hands, hands would grab the pathogen and the arms are called constant part of the antibody. This constant part is responsible to connect with the immune system cells. It's a normal physiological function, meaning there is nothing bad here so far. The pathogen came in, we made antibodies against it, antibodies coated it. Now the antibody in the pathogen complex is bound to the immune system, monocytes, macrophage cells, innate arm cells. It, it actually binds with other cells too, but here, this binding is done by a specific receptor, just like SARS-CoV-2 uses ACE2. Antibodies use a receptor on monocyte called CD16. The CD16 receptor, antibody attached to it, and then pathogen arrested by this antibody, they all get connected. Then this complex gets into the immune system cell. Immune system cells normally, when this complex get into them, they would actually get the complex in and then kill the pathogen. That's a normal behavior. This is called phagocytosis, normal physiological function, no problems. What the researchers found was number one they saw weirdly strangely that the virus entered the monocytes and they said 
how did it enter there? So it turned out it used the antibody mediated CD16 pathway. But that, the story would have stopped there and they would have said, yeah, sure, fine, this happened. It happens for every pathogen. The problem became that when the virus entered the monocytes, the, in, the immune system cells, instead of getting destroyed in there, it actually climbed out of the jail and infected that pathogen, that, that cell. When the cell got infected, that means that cell is now destroyed because now the virus would replicate in there, make more copies, then come out in that process, the, vi the cell immune system cell is gone. So this immune system cell now, monocyte, has three pathways, three behaviors. One, that the virus replicates in it, and on the way out, when there are too many virus progenies or daughters, they just burst it open and come out cell destroyed or the same cell is attacked by other immune system cells to say man you have some infection inside you we're going to kill you that's also possible or the cell this monocyte which got infected commits suicide kills itself so the first abnormality that they found researchers was Monocyte got infected by the virus, which they were not supposed to. Second interesting thing they found was that the once it was able to infect through the antibody-dependent enhancement, which is the first time observation, it's amazing. Second thing that they found was that cell's response was very interesting. Cell did not sit around like other cells to say, okay, fine, other immune system cells are going to kill me now. It didn't do that. Cell also did not cause apoptosis. Apoptosis is killing of itself quietly without releasing any inflammatory markers. So inflammation does not happen. And I gave this example yesterday. We kill or our RBCs die all the time. Macrophages die all the time. Monocytes die all the time. They don't start inflammation when they're dying. Why? Because they know that we are just dying as a normal physiological function. And we should not release any inflammatory markers and so they just fade away that is called apoptosis but these monocytes chose a different route they decided that i am infected i am going to die now i'm going to kill myself but i'm going to tell everyone that there is a problem so they chose a very different route of killing themselves this route is called pyroptosis, pyrop fire, right? Pyrexia, fever, heat. It is called pyroptosis. Optosis is death. So they decided a new pathway. Nowadays, there is a lot of research on pyroptosis. So it's not that they decided a new pathway. The pathway is this. We are just kind of, for many years now, are fascinated by this pathway. In this pathway, this monocyte that has this virus in it running around, it activates this monocyte, activates some proteins in it. Imagine if uh, there's a movie. In the movie, there is a house. Let's call that house monocyte. And within the house, there are people who are sitting in there and there are some bad people outside. The people inside say, Let's make some, some, you know, those, what are those, Mahler, <laughs> the fire bombs or something with whatever is available at home and throw them out. So what they do is they become busy making those tiny bottles with the bombs. So in the case of monocyte, the monocyte activates inflammasomes. Inflammasomes are little machineries whose job is to create inflammatory markers before the cell dies. So inside that home, people are making small markers, interleukin 1b and interleukin 18 and TNF and blah, and they're piling them up. Once they pile them up, 
the cell then creates holes from inside. Imagine there is another person sitting inside the house which makes tiny holes in the walls. Through the walls, they put the guns out and they shoot. So the cell also activates proteins that would make small holes in the membrane. The cell is preparing to kill itself. So those small pipes that are created, through them, those inflammatory markers that were prepared, the bombs, are thrown out. When they are thrown out, they are signals to the neighboring immune system cells to say, become ready. I am infected and I am going to die. But here is the activation signal for you to become ready and become active. So interleukin 1, beta, interleukin 18 are specifically a result of inflammasome activity. So what is this cell doing? It is trying to die with inflammatory markers released. It is trying not to die quietly. Okay, so once those pipes are formed, that will make holes in the cell's membrane. Cell knows I'm done. Cell knows I'm dying. It's not going to recover from there. It is gone. But it is doing something on the way out. And that is it is going to put holes in its own membrane. It has prepared inflammatory markers. It is going to release them. Now when it releases them, the result of that is that the cell internal guts become unstable which allows the cell to become, the membrane to become unstable. Osmotic pressure inside the cell increases, or you can simply say the cell starts picking up. The, the water around the cell starts pouring into the cell. This is like flooding of a home. So now that water slowly causes the cell to swell up and finally fracture it from inside. The pressure from inside of the water causes the cell to burst open. When the cell is burst open, it had so many inflammatory markers produced before it died. All of them are released outside. Plus the other damaging molecules are released, damage patterns are released. The other cells in the neighborhood, other immune cells, will look at that and say, oh man, I need to become active. And that would start an inflammatory cycle. The more this continues to happen, the more inflammation would occur, the more severity of the disease. Now, where did they find these? They found them in the blood, monocytes. So that means inflammation within the blood system. That means clotting will be occurring. That means endothelial damage will be occurring. Blood vessel swellings would be occurring. And then they found this to happen in the macrophages of the lung. Not all of them, about 20% of them. So that means inside the lungs, there was severe fight and inflammation going on because of the ADE-based mechanism. And the final thing, they found this mechanism to not, in, not be engaged in all monocytes. So if let's say they took some blood from me and I was severe COVID. And let's say they were 100 cells. Not all the 100 were doing this. 10 of them were doing it. So even within one person, not everything was doing ADE. Some cells were doing it. But in the severe patients, every patient's blood and these cells had this activity happening. Then what they did was, they also took antibodies. So now here they have proved that antibody with the virus can find a route other than the AS2 to infect the, the monocyte, right? They said, well, maybe vaccine would do the same because vaccine produces the antibodies too, which will connect with the virus. So maybe vaccine antibodies and then you put the virus in, this is going to happen. And to their interest, and uh, I'm sure that they were surprised too, this did not happen. So they say that even when the vaccine-generated antibodies were twice in their load, in their quantity, compared to COVID patients' antibodies, even then, ADE did not happen with the vaccine. 
Then they also tried monoclonal antibodies. They put the monoclonal antibodies with the virus with the monocytes. And of course, monoclonal antibody will bind with the virus, just like other antibodies will. And now this monoclonal antibody and the virus got stuck on the CD16 monocyte and caused the ADE as well. Not to the same extent as the COVID-based infections antibodies. So that means what they found was SARS-CoV-2 severe patients had ADE happening in them because of SARS-CoV-2 and the antibodies generated by that person in that cycle. Second, they found that vaccine did not cause ADE or vaccine generated antibodies did not cause ADE. Third, they found that monoclonal antibodies also caused ADE but to a lower level. So that's that discussion. Now, I want to balance this out with the following. Even when this is a new information, it does not mean there is a new intensity of the virus or there is a new failure of the monoclonals. We have been looking at the virus for years now. That is its behavior. That behavior does not change. We just find out more about it. Because I saw yesterday some folks saying, does this mean that if I get infected, I will always have ADE and would that become a problem? So, of course, please don't get infected. But this is not a new phenomena. This is what was happening in people, some people. Why was it happening? We don't know. And so why do some people become severe? We do not know. Why do some people do not catch the virus at all? We do not know. Why some stay asymptomatic, some stay mild than other moderate and severe. We know the mechanisms that happen in the body, but there are still researches that are happening on the genetic side. So there are some clues, some genes are found, but it's not necessary that everything is clear. So that is the, the summary. I hope this was a, um, a I hope it is clear.